What's up and welcome back to Thrashing Outdoors. You know by the title of this video and why you clicked on it. We're here to talk about this. So, 16 months of ownership. One year, four months. And we're going to tell you what we like, what we don't like, our ups and downs, our goods and bads. And uh, hopefully I don't leave anything out, but I'm not guaranteeing that I won't. And uh, yeah, I just basically want to make this video <clears throat> so that anybody looking into a, maybe the brand tracker or maybe the actual Target V18 combo, which is what I have. To help you decide is this what you want to do was this exactly what you want so when I first started looking at them uh, it seemed to me that yes they are a little <clears throat> less they are a little uh, in the lower side of the quality but for the things that you want quality it had it um, yeah it doesn't have you know, amazing leather seats, uh, <clears throat> and a few other things, but they're cheaper. I mean, this boat on the floor, the way it sits right now, <clears throat> was thirty. What was it? Thirty-two thousand, thirty-six thousand. You take everything that this boat has and put it into a lund, you're at sixty thousand. I mean, it is what it is, but. Lund obviously has a, a better rep. Um, they, <clears throat> their interior stuff, I have been in a few Lund boats and some of the things that they do on the inside is actually pretty nice. One thing I can't get over is that Lund is still riveted and uh, you know every other boat, aluminum boat out there is all welded. So to me, a weld is stronger than a rivet. I don't know. Don't quote me, I'm not an expert. It's just my opinion. You got your opinion? Please comment below. I'll read them. <clears throat> but anyways, when I was purchasing this boat, and I'm going to try to make this short, sweet, so this video is not forever long. But uh, 18 foot, almost 20. Uh, my goals were to find something I could fish any body of water I wanted to. Obviously, within my area, I live in the uh, Midwest, so it's not like <clears throat> I'm getting out on the ocean or anything. But I wanted to be able to fish any body of water, and I wanted to be able to fish for anything I wanted to fish for. If I was going to troll for salmon, I want to be able to do it. If I want to just bass fish, uh, you know, the shorelines, I want to be able to do it. If I want to fish, anchor up and fish, uh, you know, catfish or walleye or any crappie, it don't matter. I wanted to be able to fish whatever the hell I wanted to fish. But another, on the same side, I also kind of wanted to make it to where... The boat that I bought was going to be suitable for me and my family. <clears throat> I didn't want to buy something that would just sit in the driveway and I would never use it unless I was fishing. So with this, you know, package, you're able to pull skis, you're able to uh, pull tubes. There's plenty of room just to throw a cooler in and go for a boat ride, which I've done several times with just me, my wife, and uh, my little two-year-old daughter. And she loves it. And that's something that I wanted to be able to do. Uh... So for everything that I was looking for, this boat had it and a few more and, uh, you know, was cheaper. You know, I wasn't paying almost double the amount or one and a half times the amount of this boat for, you know, a name brand Lund or Ranger, <clears throat> something like that. So that's good to me. That was good. So far, honestly, through the year, almost a year and a half that I've owned it, uh, it does everything I wanted to do. It came with a 175. That thing pushes this boat like there's no business. It gets good fuel, good fuel mileage. It's super quiet. Uh, I like all those things about it. And like I said, a 175, I haven't driven two, one with a 200. I get a lot of questions of, is it worth the upgrade to go to a 200? I haven't drove one personally. But, I would say no. You figure it's about $100 a horse for a 
a Mercury engine. So this is about an $18,000 motor. Now, if you're looking at a 200 horse, you're around 20,000 roughly. And honestly, I can give you a sticker price of this motor. It's $18,300. So like I said, hundred dollars horse is not too far off. So a 200 horse, you're looking at probably $21,000. That's saving three to $4,000 on the end of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, uh, like I said, to, to spend the fourth, if you're really money conscious, 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 and, uh, worried about what the overall costing is going to be go with the 175 it runs great i've had no issues with it i know i've had a few people comment that they have issues uh and they hate tracker for it and blah, blah blah but that's honestly what i've been getting what i've been hearing sounds more of a uh mercury issue not not tracker i mean obviously they're the ones that put the motors on their boats and they should be the ones to take care of you i agree 100 percent with that but I have had no issues with this fire first time every time and like i said i usually can on my trips when i go out for a week family vacation it's got a 40 gallon tank i fill it up i usually if i do a lot of running i still have a quarter of the tank left at the end of the week um i've not had one time that i went out to a week and had to go fill it up before the week ended so it's great on fuel um Let's just kind of dive in here with the outside before I even uncover it. The cover, it's a decent cover. Don't get me wrong, it's it's not bad, but it has its flaws, right? So when I first bought the boat, the, the flip-up seats in the rear were up, and that's how I kind of thought, okay, strap with it, no big deal. So my first trip to Minnesota, as you can see right here, wore a hole through my cover really quick. So. Within the first couple months, I'm taking the cover off and I'm sending it in to get it repaired. And as well as <clears throat> up here where she rubs against this, it was a little torn there, so they patched that as well. Um, for a cover to sit outside, keep it covered up, it's a great cover. Traveling, mm, so so. Can you do it? Yes. Is it going to take a beating? Yes, um, I've lost this tie down here. I've got to get a new one for that. It uh, just got tattered and wore down to where the uh, it finally broke, and that's all in travel. Um, like I said, it's still holding up pretty well. Uh, the buckles here are not, they, they work well, but they do seem to slip a little bit. The ratchets back here occasionally when you're tightening them down but they are working just fine another goof that i made and pardon my dirty motor here but this buckle here um i accidentally set the motor down on that buckle broke it and if you're going to get a replacement you have to get it from them because i bought one from amazon tightened it down snapped it immediately so this is actually a really strong buckle that you end up having to buy from them. It's only like three bucks, but they get you with shipping. Because they at first they wanted to charge me like eight bucks for shipping on a two dollar piece, <clears throat> and I end up going back just saying screw it. I got to have that buckle, so I'm just gonna buy it. And that the day I went back, they actually end up having free shipping on everything. So I bought two of them and paid six dollars for two buckles. But that was my fault. That wasn't the cover's fault. I set the motor down. I cracked it, broke it. Bad deal. Uh, like I said, everything else, it does come. Another complaint I can't have is it does come with three poles to set up in here. If I'm towing it, the poles don't go in it. I get 10 miles, not even 10 miles, 500 miles down the road, the poles will fall out. Don't matter how tight you have them winced up, they fall out. So what I usually do, as you can kind of see, is I put my seat up in the back here, and that kind of keeps a pitch in the middle so if it does rain or anything it can uh, um, fall off during the winter uh, or if it's sitting for a while I will put the poles back in just so that way uh, it doesn't collect any rain uh, if your seat if my seats not in there it will collect rain so that is that um, another thing we're gonna talk about bad stuff now or at least one bad thing. And I believe that this, I, 
the way it was handled really ticks me off even to this day and I won't make this mistake again I hope that you guys see this and you don't make the same mistake but in Arkansas on my trip family fishing trip we go to load the boat on the last night and my brother-in-law says hey there's something wrong here and I said uh, okay I'm looking at it. I don't see it right away uh, I had noticed that he had taken this hook which a lot of people do when they first um, try to hook this boat up for me as I'm pulling on the trailer and they hook it into here <clears throat> so they try to wind this all up in there it doesn't work that way this is your safety latch right <clears throat> so I had him switch that back around and then as he's winching he says hey it still don't look right something's wrong and I come back forward and my boat was probably back back to about here and this tower had leaned all the way forward it had cracked at the welds here there is a I've got a video of just talking about that if you guys want to watch it but it cracked there and in the end of things that piece they obviously give you a whole new winch whole new tower uh, winch rope everything here is brand new and it's $116 for that they charge you um, $110 to install that it's literally four four bolts guys loosen these up this whole thing comes off and you can slide it do whatever you need to do uh, one thing that ticked me off is one they charged me $110 to do that the four bolts which is does not take an hour don't tell me that takes an hour um, but that's what they charge $110 an hour <clears throat> and two if I bought a whole new system there was no I didn't see a core charge um, the guy says that there probably was, but I didn't get any of my old stuff back. I want my old winch back. This actually will unbolt from here as well. So if I ever have a winch problem, I have a backup now, but I didn't get anything back. So that ticked me off as well. <clears throat> Same time I took it in, um, I had a little grease leaking around the seals uh, up front. They replaced the, the four, I think it was four rubber caps, which were... 80 cents a piece, dollar a piece, something like that, maybe two. And uh, they charged me $55 to put those on. What in my book is just ridiculous. One, the tower should have been taken care of. I was out of warranty on the trailer. The boat has a five year warranty, the trailer has a one year warranty. <clears throat> I think nowadays they're actually saying they're worth their uh, three year warranty a year later on the trailers, but I, I'd have to look that up to confirm. But 13 months in, the winch stand broke. In my book, you should have took care of me. That is a safety issue. If I'm going down the road and that breaks, that means my boat can come off the trailer. Um, obviously, there's an issue. I've heard of other people commenting that that's an issue, that they've had the same issue. So if you do, or if you haven't yet, and you have the same boat, drive it up there as far as you can on in the water. Uh, don't rely on that to winch the boat up because you're I have a pretty good feeling you're gonna end up breaking it and uh, if you do pay the hundred call Bass Pro say hey I need a new winch stand and a winch 116 bucks go pick it up replace it yourself uh, literally if you if I was to pull it off right here I could put it back on tie it down drive five minutes to the, to the local lake here or ten minutes dunk my boat in and get it brought up to where it needs to be brought up and it would save me two hundred fifty dollars so that being said let's jump on the inside and we'll uh, go over a few things on the inside all right so we're in here don't mind the mess because it's uh i do need to clean it out but for the inside of the boat one thing honestly i could say about if you're gonna go with the targa and you're gonna buy the boat brand new Schedule it to where you can actually build it the way you want. It'll cost you less in the end, and you'll be more happy with it out the gate. When I bought this boat, I had about six weeks before my first fishing trip. They tell you eight weeks, and if it, it might show up before then, but it will not show up after then is what I was told. But they cannot guarantee me anything uh, less than eight weeks. So I had six weeks, and I wasn't willing to make that choice I, I wanted the boat as soon as I get it so that way I would make my trip so the only thing I wish that I could do is now don't get me wrong uh, it's all carpeted here and then it's vinyl on the floor 
Um, what I wish I could do was actually vinyl all of this. And basically the only thing that would be carpeted is the side. But it would be vinyl on the floor. Every part of the floor would be vinyl. Basically so you get in any blood, anything like that. Um, you know, it's not on your carpet. You can kind of get a power washer just wash it out. Now one thing I can say is this stuff actually does clean up very nice. Uh, I got the bright idea that I would clean fish in my boat and before we even got back and I had a catfish that just bled beyond belief and it was all over the carpet and um, surprisingly enough when I got home I took a hose and just it all came out really easily it didn't stain the carpet uh, it cleaned up very well so I was actually really surprised about that but if I had my chance I would still make it all vinyl that way I could just get a power washer and wash everything down when needed. Um, as for the another thing like in the electronics, I did upgrade that electronic. I did, I do still want to put one up front. Uh, I have a video of that being installed. It's actually not that difficult. It just takes you a little time. It can be done by the homeowner or the boat owner. Um, just takes a little finesse patience and it can be done <clears throat> but if I could have had it you know if I would order the boat exactly I wanted I would have had them put that on put one in the front and that way I wouldn't have to do any of that stuff um, as for the live wells and stuff um, one other complaint I can say that I am not a big fan of is these how high these are so when I've got the regular seat pedestal in here and you're trying to lift this open as you can see it it hits so that's one thing that kind of um, is not the greatest I, I would say uh, I'm not a big fan of that I wish these were just a hair taller just enough to at least clear the doors and they may make them that way these days uh, I, this is a 2019 so I know we're only one year and they're probably coming out with the 2021s but and they may have changed that but as of right now with these I had to actually order new seat pedestals, which were way too long. Try to figure out how to cut them myself, get them to fit. It was just a pain in the butt, and I don't ever use them. So it's kind of a waste of money. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is making a rod holder out of one of those. Um, for per storage wise, there is lots and lots of storage in here. There is a few things that I like that I've seen in Lund that I wish this boat had, but it's not a big deal, I guess. But there is lots and lots of storage. Um, another thing that I wish it had was it, right here is your trolling motor batteries and your trolling motor charger. Now, this is a two bank charger. I wish it was a three bank. That way I could hook up my, when I plugged it in, it would actually charge my cranking battery too. Um, but it doesn't. And maybe there's a reason for that, but personally... I would rather it charge all three. That way if I end up having this thing sit for a couple months, whether because I'm working or because um, it's in storage all winter long, I can hook up my extension cord right to that and all three of them are being charged and I don't have to worry about trying to get another charger to put on this side. My goal one of these days is to actually upgrade that with a three bank, but it's really tight quarters and I'm dreading on getting in there and pulling that one out and putting a new one in. So, it kind of is what it is. Um, moving to the console area. The seats are holding up great. I don't have any problems with the seats. Uh, it's still nice and comfy. Um, everything's positioned pretty well. The only thing I don't like on Lund, and I don't know, or I mean on uh, Tracker, I'm sorry. And I don't know if Lund has the same situation or if there's other ones. But in the console, you have... Battery, tilt, fuel gauge, water pressure for the engine, and attack and, and miles per hour. <clears throat> I did have my miles per hour stop working like a couple months into uh, owning the boat, but the GPS on here actually shows me a better speed anyways. I did figure out that I had got some, I found the hole that water passes through to make this work, and it's was plugged 
And if yours stops working, that's probably what, what happened. But the one thing I don't like is I don't have like oil temp. I don't have hour, an hour meter. I don't have um, just those visual cues to let me know that the engine is running smooth. So that makes me a little nervous. There is a piece that I want to put on. It's called Mercury Vessel View. Um, and then I can view everything by my phone and at least be able to see the hours and so on. But it's 215 bucks, and like I said, uh, you know, if you watch my one of my previous videos, the reason I haven't been making YouTube videos in a, about a month or a month and a half now is because uh, the COVID with being laid off, laid off and stuff. It I haven't I've had to budget my money and I've had to do other things to pay my bills monthly, and uh, I'm not going to go into it, but. It's taken up a lot of my time and, you know, not having my daughter in daycare because I can't afford the daycare. It's just we've been making do and I, and I haven't been able to really get out here and do anything <clears throat> on YouTube. So, being as that said, I haven't bought anything for the boat. I haven't put the uh, Mercury Vessel View on it or anything like that. But that's one thing that I am not a fan of. They, there should be a, a cluster or something that shows oil pressure, oil temp, water temp. Um, you know, this thing's loaded with sensors. I should be able to read. I should be able to see, monitor my engine as I'm running and know that way if something starts to go wrong, I know about it. I know this thing has a warning signal. It'll start to beep at you, I think. I think I did have some low water pressure at one point and it started to beep. And it was because I had some junk. So I, I, I believe it has an audible... Uh, system, but I don't know to what extent. Overall, the boat's been pretty dang good. I can't complain. Uh, there are a few things that I, you know, I think that should be tweaked a little better. Um, another thing that I know of is the build system. Uh, it's got just the switch on and off, and it works great. But I, I, ha I need to put an auto build in. Every year we go to Minnesota. Every year this thing sits at the dock with nothing over it and every year it dumps rain on us and then I come out and I pump uh, ga gallons upon gallons out I bet you I pumped out one after one night of rain I bet you I pumped out over a hundred gallons of water that was in the boat <clears throat> so I want to get an automatic bilge put in this thing to where it's automatically just pumping out once it gets to a right to a certain level um, that's one thing that you know you might want to look at in upgrading if you have the same situations um as power wise i'm pretty i don't i don't have any complaints about that the trolling motor comes with a great trolling motor it works well i mean uh unless you really want to get fancy and an upgrade the trolling motor that comes on is great the one thing i did was i upgraded the iPilot system on the top of it i didn't change the system i just did the the cover the actual all right so my battery died but anyways i believe i was talking about the uh trolling motor the only thing i've done with the trolling motor is put the iPilot. Uh, upgrade on it so where I could actually use the you know GPS locking it pulls the boat well it uh, it runs on the 24 volt system and it it lasts all day if not a couple days depending on how much you're really using it but I've never ran out of batteries being out on the water uh, and like I said and when we go down to Michigan or I'm sorry uh, Minnesota and uh, Arkansas I usually charge it at nighttime but they don't get charged at all through the day, and I'm using it nonstop all day long. So it works great. Uh, there's nothing I can complain about the trolling motor. Um, the upgrades is I put a vented cover on the back, so it would stop. That's I guess that's one thing. So this cow takes a pretty good beating. I've put a couple scratches and nicks in it. You know, I have guys with me and myself included. You know, ding it with a uh, a lure or something. And then just from road grime. So I did spend the money and put a, a new cover on it. It was cool. I could actually label it with my YouTube channel. And uh, it looks good. So just a little protective um, for that. These cows are not cheap. And the cover's, well, the cover's like a third of the price of the actual thing. So 
Uh, so for just to kind of wrap up, um, <clears throat> unless I forget something, which I'll come back and let you know if I do, but just to wrap up, update, I did forget something. I did install boat buckles on the back of this thing. They're a little tight, but they fit. Get the smaller version, not the big wide Bass Pro ones, those won't fit. We get the smaller boat buckles. These are amazing. They make things so much easier. You literally come over here, loosen it up, boat's unhooked. And you're ready to go back, put it back on the trailer and go home. Two clicks, tight as a whistle, done. So that was another upgrade I put on there. Those are 50 bucks. They don't, uh, they don't cost anything. Like I said, get the smaller ones. These are, uh, I think they're rated up to 1,400 pounds, which the actual straps that come on this are rated to 1,000. So uh, you're, you're still doubling up, or you're still making it stronger. And uh, they are nice. Cover. It's an okay cover. Not the greatest cover for towing. It will fall apart on you eventually. Um, the boat has been an overall great boat. I can't really complain about it. It runs well. It handles super well in the water. And for sturdy or for, you know, for beefcake wise, I, you know, I've... I've had some close calls. I've hit a few things, and it's the paint job. Everything's holding up really well. I could actually show you a little scuff on the bottom from where I assume was a tree stump. I have no idea. Couldn't see it. But I hit it probably at 10 to 15 miles an hour, and it raised the whole boat out of the water. And it literally, the, the paint, the finish, is, everything is still perfect. There's literally a slight... Um, indication like uh, divot to where the where you could see where it hit and drug you could see where it drug all the way down the boat from about the midway to all the way to the back but it didn't puncture it didn't crinkle the metal it, it it's pretty stout it held it took it like a champ only thing that you can really tell is right where the initial hit point is you can kind of see that it's got a small almost look like hail damage dent and then um, you can see the scuff where the clear coat or gel coat or whatever's on it uh, is scuffed a little bit all the way down but that's it and like I said uh, that one scared me I'm, I immediately took it to the ramp afterwards we loaded it and I looked at it because I wasn't sure if there was a hole in it or not um, we hit it pretty hard so it didn't do anything it was, it's tough so honestly like I said there's not much else I can really say about it the boats handled held up very well for about a year and a half um, it never gets stored inside. It's always outside. I've got my cover on it in the winter time um, I just make sure that I run some antifreeze to the motor which Heck it hasn't ran in like two months now, so Probably not have water in it, but I usually run a little antifreeze through the water for the through the motor and make sure that I stabilize my fuel I throw another tarp on top of it just to kind of help protect it from the uh, UV rays and all the snow and stuff but it's, it's stored right here in my driveway, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And nothing's really fading on it. The, the, the cover actually doesn't look like it's faded hardly at all. And um, it's still in great shape. It gets a little dirty from sitting out here, but you know, I, I come out and wash it occasionally. So it doesn't get a, it's not a um, luxurious lifestyle that this thing's living. It gets, it gets abused and it's, it's holding up pretty well. I know there's a lot of uh, comments on YouTube and on other places that Tracker sucks, but honestly, I other than the, um, I can say the boat, in my opinion, itself is a great boat. It's worth the money that you spend on it. The saying is you, you get what you pay for. I'm sure that if you bought a $100,000 boat, you're probably gonna get a hell of a lot nicer things. That's not what I was going for. I didn't want super nice things. I didn't need suede seats and all that crap. I wanted a fishing boat that I could literally turn into fishing and then in the afternoon go pull my son on the tubes or just go for a boat ride if I wanted to. So, 
everything's held up great. Um, like I said, there's some things here and there that uh, I would actually like uh, to have done better than others. Uh, like the rod storage, I'm not a big fan of that. If you don't have rod sleeves, your rods will get tangled together, so make sure you buy rod sleeves. Uh, these are these side rods are uh, actually really good. Really, not, I like those. Um, that's it, guys. I mean, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the box uh, comments below. I'll answer them. Uh, but as of for now, those are the only things that I've really had issues with that I can remember. If I can't remember them, I'm, I'm obviously assuming that they weren't that important. And I've showed you a couple of the upgrades that I've done, uh, which would have been kind of nice to have done from the factory so I didn't have to do it, but it is what it is. And like I said, the boat's holding up great. There's nothing uh, I can really complain about, just a little customer service from Bass Pro that I'm not happy with. But that's not on Tracker, that's on Bass Pro. Bass Pro does not make Tracker. They don't make Nitro either, but they sell their boats. Or Tahoe, but same thing. So, like I said, if there's anything you guys want to know, questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I know I always say it at the end of the videos, and I probably should say it in the beginning, but please subscribe. Um, it helped me out a lot. I really appreciate it. And uh, until next time, we're out of here.